Hi everyone, welcome back to a new post today and let's continue with part 2 of the preliminary questions for current affairs for the week of June from 10th to 16th and let's continue so the 26th I stopped at 25 and 26th is that the third installment with regard to tax devolution of 118,000 was given to the states by the center now the union government released a third installment of the tax devolution to the state governments amounting to 118,000 on 12 June and uh, which it does normally on a monthly basis of rupee 59,000 crore the tax devolution is a major source of fund let me tell you apart from the own taxes that the state uh, that the states collect and is used for develop uh, spending on various development and welfare as well as priority sectors uh, projects and schemes currently uh, on the recommendations of the finance commission of india 41 percent of the taxes collected by the center are devolved to the 40 uh, to the states in 14 installments during the fiscal year tax devolution is based on the recommendation of the finance commission so this is about the tax devolution at number 27 is adb uh, provides a loan to bangladesh under a program called a sustainable recoverable program now this can be important from international affairs so asian development bank provided a dollar 250 million policy loan to bangladesh uh, if to, for to help it in economic recovery following the covid-19 pandemic this is the first so first sub program of the dollar 500 million sustainable Economic Recovery Program of the ADB. The proposed Sustainable Economic Recovery Program is a policy based alone to help the government of Bangladesh implement urgent reforms for rapid economic recovery from the coronavirus pandemic. ADB is a regional bank that has its headquarters in Manila, Philippines, was established in 1966. ADB defines itself as a social development organization that is dedicated to reducing poverty in Asia Pacific through inclusive economic growth, environmental sustainable growth, and also regional integration now at 28 a disaster management meets so disaster management is under the mandate of the Ministry of Home Affairs at the center and this meet was chaired by our very home union home minister Amit Shah so he met the ministers of disaster management both of the centers and the state and the union territories of Delhi now there is a national disaster management act that calls for establishment of a national disaster management authority state disaster management authority of well the at the national disaster management authority is chaired by the prime minister as the chairman the NDMA has not more than nine members at a time including the vice chairperson so apart from the chairperson as that, the, that is a prime minister, that is a vice chairperson, and they should be not no, more than nine members. The tenure of the NEMA is five years. The NEMA, which was initially established in 2005, was through an executive order. And the National Disaster Management Authority is the agency of the Ministry of Home Affairs. Now, Union Minister announced three major schemes at this meeting worth rupees 8,000 crore for disaster management in the country. One is the 5,000 crore project to expand and modernize fire services in the state. Number two is 2,500 crore project to reduce the risk of urban flooding in four seven most uh, populous metros that is met uh, mumbai kolkata chennai uh, bangalore ahmedabad and pune and at 825 crore is a national landslide risk mitigation project for landslide mitigation in 17 states and union union territories at number 29 is w20 summit now lately in the previous uh, uh, in the previous uh, post i had spoken to you that there are three tracks of the d20 two are official and one is unofficial the unofficial track one of the unofficial track the program meeting under the unofficial track is the W20. Now, the W20 meeting summit under G20 Presidentship of India was held in Mahabalipuram. And the W20 means nothing but Women 20. It is the official D20 engagement group created in 2015 under Turkey's presidency of the G20 with the objective of focusing on gender equity. The primary objective of the W20 is women's empowerment, advocating for women's rights, raising women's voices in the society. India's D W20 agenda focuses on key five priority areas that is women entrepreneurship grassroots women leadership bridging the gender digital divide education skill development and climate change and at number 30 is G20 adopts an action plan on sustainable development action by India. So India released a seven-year action plan on sustainable development goals during the G20 development ministers meeting at Varanasi. The plan focuses on three core agendas. They are harnessing the data, digital technologies for development, securing fair transitions and investing in women-led development, the unveiling of new plan outcomes amid the setbacks to SDGs and follow uh, and this follows the 2016 action plan which has faced various hurdles in its implementation 
and at number 31 is PM Divine for the Development of Northeast. Now, PM Divine stands for Prime Minister's Development Initiative for the Northeastern Region. It is a scheme that is announced as a new central sector scheme in the budget of 2022 and 23. That is the last year. Cabinet approved the PM Divine scheme in 2022. The scheme has 100% central government funding with a total outlay of 6,600 crore for a four-year period from 2022-23 to 2025-26. This is uh, the remaining years of the 15th Finance Commission. We are yet to get the 16th Finance Commission. The 15th Finance Commission term will end in 2025-26. Now, the objectives of PM Divine, which is dedicated to the Northeast, are number one, funding infrastructure in the spirit of PM Gati Shakti. Uh, so number two is supporting social development projects based on the felt needs of the Northeastern region. Number three is enabling livelihood activities for youth and women. Number four is filling the development gaps in various sectors. PM Divine will not only be a substitute for the existing central and sector schemes, it will also lead to the creation of infrastructure, support industries, social development projects, create livelihood activities for both the youth and the women and thus leading to income and employment generation. The Ministry of Development for the Northeastern Region is responsible for the matters relating to planning, execution and monitoring of the development schemes and projects in the Northeastern Region. So, at number 32 is now Rupee Kayath trade agreement between India and Myanmar. Now, Myanmar is facing a, a slew of sanctions from US and therefore it is unable to earn sufficient foreign exchange to import goods from its trade partners and therefore it is also uh, having a difficulty in paying the transactions from uh, with other countries in dollars and therefore to facilitate Rupee and Kayath trade, India and Myanmar have agreed to open, open Wastro accounts in their banks to facilitate this RBI has now appointed Punjab National Bank to open a special Vostro account for the foreign trade with Myanmar in Kayat, which is the currency of Myanmar. PNB is in turn approached two banks in Myanmar where it can open its own accounts as well. Vostro account, what is exactly a Vostro account? It is an account defined as that uh, as that where a correspondent bank's holds an account on behalf of another bank. Vostro is a Latin word which means your, that is Y-O-U-R. Therefore, Vostro account implies it is your account. An example of such an account where it would be that an HSBC Vostro account is held in SPI in India. Vostro accounts have been um, permitted by RBI uh, as of recently mainly to allow, allow bilateral trade in local currency. So, you need to remember this point. And number 33 is the PVTG group. President interacts with them. So, President Draupadi Murmu recently interacted with the particularly vulnerable tribal groups of India. At the Rashtrapati Bhavan, she also witnessed cultural performance by certain particularly vulnerable groups such as the Mahal Pahariya of Bihar, the Siddhi of Gujarat, the Irula of Kerala, the Hasaharya of Rajasthan, the Baiga Padauni of Madhya Pradesh and the Budigali of Odisha on this occasion. Now, let me tell you that in Budget 2023 and 24, the government announced a Pradhan Mantri PVTG Development Mission to be implemented for the PVTG or the particularly vulnerable tribal groups. Now, the term PVTG was used for the very first time by the Debar Commission in 1960. The particularly vulnerable groups are certain communities that are much more backward than the regular tribals in India and are defined uh, and are identified and defined as the vulnerable among the scheduled tribes. Now, the tribal communities are often identified by certain specific signs like the primitive traits, distinctive culture, geographical isolation, shyness of contact with the community at large and also backward but the particularly vulnerable tribal groups have four more important crime, uh, criteria. They are the pre-agriculture level of technology, which is number one. Number two is low level of literacy. Number three is economic backwardness. And number four is a declining or a stagnant population. And at number 34 is circular economy. So, circular economy is a model of production and consumption which involves sharing, leasing, reusing, repairing, refurbishing and recycling the existing materials and products as long as possible. In this way, the life cycle of the products is extended and there is less of waste generated into the environment. A circular economy favours activities that preserve the value in the form of energy, labour and materials. The meaning, uh, the, it means designing of durability, reuse, remanufacturing, recycling to keep the products, components and the materials circulating in the economy. 
So what exactly? Recently, retail inflation was a news. So at number 35 is retail inflammation. But before that, India is now, uh, you know, forwarding the concept of circular economy to especially reduce the waste and also reuse whatever is being used for manufacturing and production. So number 35 is retail inflation. What exactly is retail inflation? Retail inflation is also known as consumer price index inflation. It is the rate at which the price of goods and services that the consumer buy for personal use increase over a period of time it measures a change in the cost of basket of goods and services that are typically purchased by households like food clothing housing transportation and medical care there are four types of CPI that is CPI for industrial workers number one CPI for agriculture workers number two CPI for rural laborer number three CPI for urban non manual employees number four of these the first three are compiled by the Labor Minister Bureau under the Ministry of Labor and Employment this is very important and the CPI CPI for urban non-manual employees is compiled by the NSO or the National Statistical Organization under the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation. So, uh, the Monetary Policy com uh, Committee of the RBI uses the CPI to control the inflation in the country. And at number 36 is the heat wave. So IMD consider. So heat waves are getting prominent this year because it is also the year of the El Nino. So IMD considers it only as a rise in maximum temperature. So it defines heat wave as if the maximum temperature of a station reaches at least 40 degrees centigrade or more for the plains. 37 degrees centigrade or more for the coastal area and at least 30 degrees centigrade or more for the hilly region. Now, uh, it, uh, it issues alerts in colors of green, yellow, orange and red by the IMD. According to the IMD, a region has a heat wave it's a, if its ambient temperature deviates by at least 4 to 4.5 to 6.4 degrees centigrade from the long term long term average there is also a heat wave if the maximum temperature crosses 45 degrees centigrade in a hill station now heat waves are formed because of two reasons because of the warmer air flowing in from another region and because something is producing it locally and air is warmed locally when the air at the higher land higher up the land surface comes down and is compressed therefore producing hot air near the surface at number 37 is uh, the landfall of cyclone. So we had cyclone Bipajoy and it made a landform in uh, a landfall in Gujarat. I'm sorry. Landfall is the event of the tropical cyclone where it comes to the land moving away from the water which is a source of power or energy. Tropical cyclones which are mostly found between 30 degrees centigrade in the north and 30 degrees centigrade in the north, south are centers of low depression. They are classified as making a landfall when the center which is classified which has a low uh, a, a low pressure uh, uh, moves to the coast that is to the land from the seas in strong tropical cyclones it is the center of the cyclone is called as the eye so when the eye of the cyclone reaches the land it is called as the landfall now uh, this cuts off the energy from the sea and therefore reduces the amount of uh, wind and also the rainfall as well the word cyclone has been uh, derived from the greek word cyclos which means a coil of snake the word cyclone was coined by henry peddington who worked as a reporter in kolkata during the british rule now the term arigan and typhoon are specific region names for tropical cyclone itself tropical cyclones are called as hurricanes in the atlantic ocean and they are called as typhoons in the pacific ocean now why do tropical cyclones rota rotate counterclockwise clockwise in the northern hemisphere and clockwise in the southern hemisphere the region the reason for this is because of the earth's rotation sets up a force which is called as a coriolis force that puts the pulls the wind to the right in the northern hemisphere and left to the southern hemisphere so when a low pressure center starts from over the north of the equator the surface winds will start flowing inward trying to fill in the low pressure and they will be deflected to the right and as a counterclock and a counterclockwise rotation will be initiated the opposite that is a different Reflection to the left and clockwise rotation will occur in the south of the equator. At number 38 is the PLI scheme in Union Budget. Now, this scheme was announced by the Union Budget 2021 and 22, which was presented on 1st February 2021. Finance Minister announced an outlay of 1,97,000 uh, uh, crores for the production link incentive scheme for 13 key sectors. The main aim is to create national manufacturing champions and also to uh, generate employment opportunities for the youth in the country. The PLI scheme are the cornerstone 
of the government's push for achieving Atmanirbhar Bharat or self-reliant India. The objective is to make domestically manufactured globally competitive and to create global champions of manufacturing. They have been specifically de designed to boost the manufacturing competitiveness in sunrise sectors and strategic tech sectors and to curb cheaper imports and also to reduce the import bills and also to improve cost competitiveness of the domestically manufactured goods and enhance domestic capacity and exports as well. Now, there are 14 sectors that have been chosen for the BLI scheme and they are mobile manufacturing and specified electronic components. Number one, number two is critical key, startling materials and drug intermediaries, uh, active pharmaceutical ingredients. Number three is manufacturing of medical devices. Number four is automobile and auto components. Number five is pharmaceutical drugs. Number six is specialty steel. Number seven is telecom and network products. Number eight is electronic and technology products. Number nine is white goods that is ACs and the LEDs food products at number 10 and number 11 is textile products that is technical textile and also the mff uh, segment number 12 is high efficiency solar power modules and number 13 is advanced chemistry cell uh, batteries and number 14 is the drone and the drone components and number 39 is the Guwahati has been awarded as the eat right station and who awarded this that is the food Sa uh, uh, safety and standards authority of india under its eat right movement now this is certification of uh, eat right station is awarded by FISAI for a period of two years. This was provided for the station because it provides food, food to its commuters in a hygiene and nutritious way. And number 40 is National Bamboo Mission. The National Bamboo Mission is a centrally sponsored program under the National Mission for Sustainable Agriculture and it is being implemented for a holistic development of the bamboo sector by addressing the complete value chain and establishing an effective linkage of the producers that is the growers of bamboos to the farm with the industry. Now, its objective, it strives to increase the area under bamboo plantation in non-forest government and private lands to supplement farm income and also to contribute towards resilience, climate change. And also, number two is to improve the post-harvest management through improving innovative primary processing units, treatment, seasonal plants, etc. to promote product development at micro, small and media in, uh, medium enterprises, to rejuvenate under the developed bamboo industry in India and to promote skill development, capacity building awareness generation for development of the bamboo sector and a number 41 is a critical and emerging technologies are the critical and emerging technologies initiative of critical and emerging technologies or ICET as it is called it is being in use between India and US so recently India and United States unveiled a roadmap for enhancing collaboration in high technology areas and this was a part of the initiative of critical and emerging technologies announced jointly by President Joe Biden and Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Now, the initiative on critical and emerging technologies is a framework agreed upon by India and US for cooperating in critical and emerging technologies. These emerging technologies include number one, artificial intelligence, number two, quantum computing, number three, semiconductors and number four, wireless telecommunication. Now, Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Joe Biden first announced the framework on the sidelines of the Quad meeting in Tokyo in 2022. It was launched in January this year to strengthen the strategic partnership and drive technology and defense cooperation. Primarily, ICET seeks to position New Delhi and Washington as trusted technology partners and this was said by both the, uh, both the heads of the state to build supply chain and also to support the co-production and co-development of these items. And number 42 is the Central Vista Kartavya, uh, Kartavya Path project. So the Central Vista complex is a center of administration for the nation and houses all the facilities that are needed for efficient functioning of the government of India. It is also a significant uh, major tourist destination in the country besides also being a site for majority of India's national festival, festivals and also key ceremonial events. Inaugurated in 1931, the Central Vista includes the Rashtrapati Bhavan, the North and the South blocks, the Parliament House, the Record Office also named as the National Archives along with the India Gate Monument and the Civic Gardens on either side of the Rajpath. Now the Central Vista Avenue comprises the Kartavya Path and the India Gate lawns. Rajpath as we named as so Rajpath has been named as Kartavya Pad, which symbolizes a shift from the icon of power that is Rajpath to being an example of public ownership and empowerment Kartavya Pad. 
and at number 43 is the law commission 22nd law commission of india which is a executive body yes so it is chaired by ritu rad avasti and it was in news recently especially for asking the government not to lower the age of consent from 18 to 16 and also for it looking into the uniform civil code now it is chaired once again by ritu rad avasti the law commission of india is a executive body that is established by the order of the government of india it is not a constitutional body the commission functions in research and advising the government in legal reform and also compo- it is composed of legal experts and headed by retired judges of both the supreme court and the high court the commission is established for a fixed period and works under the advisory body or as a advisory body of the ministry of law and justice the first law commission was established during the east india company's rule under the charter act of 1833 and it was presided by lord macaulay and at number 44 is the uniform civil code which the law commission chaired by rituraj ravasti is looking at so the uniform civil code as we all know speaks is spoken about in article 44 of the directive principles of the state policy but let me tell you article 37 of the dspsp it says that these uh, this provision the provision of this part of uh, is not enforceable in courts and therefore it cannot be enforced by the courts and therefore there needs to be a law to inform enforce the uniform civil code then therefore uniform civil code is being conceptualized as a set of laws that govern personal matters like marriage divorce adoption inheritance and succession for all the citizens regardless the religion it aims to replace existing diverse personal laws that form the very basis of religious affi- uh, uh, that uh, that vary based on religious affiliations so each and every uh, our marriage laws are based on every religion which is based on the scriptures and uh, article 44 of the constitution i told you this week spoke about uniform civil code article 37 says that the principles in this part are not enforceable and therefore there needs to be a separate law to enforce the uniform civil code which still hasn't happened however goa is the only state in the country that has a uniform civil code and uh, uh, why people are supporting it one number one because it promotes na- equality number two national integration number three brings gender parity they have equal uh, uh, rights with respect uh, respect to men and women and also number four to it removes the loopholes in the personal laws now why certain sections of the society are against it goes against the right of freedom number one absence of consensus number two and against the diversity and the religious diversity of the country number three and what are the pros of the uniform civil code first is secularism gender equality and most probably and most importantly gender parity and uh, equality as well at at number 45 is the multi commodity exchange so the multi commodity exchange of india is a commodity exchange based of india it was set up in 2003 by the government of india and it is based in mumbai now it is india's largest commodity deri- derivative exchange the india's first listed exchange and is a state of the art commodity deri- derivative exchange that facilitate online trading of commodity derivatives transactions therefore providing a platform for price discovery and also risk management the exchange which was started operations in 2003 operates under the regulatory framework of sebi that is the security and boards exchange board of india now the mck uh, mcx as it is called offers trading in commodity derivative contracts across various segments like bullion industrial metals energy agriculture commodities and also on ind- uh, indices constituted for these contracts as well it is india's first exchange to introduce commodity options and future contracts on the bullion based metals and energy indices now there are indices uh, the multi commodity exchange clearing cooperation of india limited or the mcxccl is a wholly owned subsidiary of the M- uh, mcx and is a first clearing cooperation in the indian commodity derivatives market blue economy so blue economy has been spoken about and recently the government was launching initiatives for blue economy as well so blue economy is also called as ocean economy it is a term used to describe economic activities associated with oceans and seas the world bank defines blue economy as sustainable use of ocean resources to benefit economies livelihoods and ocean ecosystem health so there are 10 types of colored economies let me tell you one by one the black economy refers to illegal or unauthorized economic activities gray economy refers to diverse a array of economic activities that may be legal but evade taxes the red economy is about mass production and mass consumption and it is derived from fordism the silver economy is a sum of economic activities of the people over the age of 50 the white economy refers to health industry the purple economy is a multidisciplinary approach to economics that encompasses a diverse array of key social issues that improves everyone's quality of life it includes care activities services such as education healthcare and women's empowerment 
empowerment as well and uh, the golden economy is also called as a sunshine economy addresses energy issue the blue economy marine economy is crucial to a spiritual financial biological cultural planetary well-being the green economy is geared to undo the damage done by the brown economy the brown economy is focused on economic growth that is largely dependent on environmentally destructive forms of activity especially extraction extracting and burning of fossil fuel like coal oil and gas and number 48 is the first janjatiya kale mahotsav was held at bhuvaneshwar and at number 49 is mission karma yogi now there are six pillars of mission karma yogi and it was launched by the prime minister as an institutionalized process for capacity building especially for the benefits of civil servants and aims to shape them as the century of in for the century of india in 2047 and there are six pillars of the mission karma yogi they are policy framework number 1 institutional framework number 2 competency framework number 3 digital learning framework number 4 uh electronic human resource management system 5 and monitoring and evaluation framework number 6 and india participated for the very very first time in the aiaf also called as the nsc uh, international animation festival at france for the very first time let me tell you india is one of the very few countries that provide cash and tent centers for foreign companies to come and make avcg content in india so this uh, avcg is related to the gaming and comic sector and this is about the next to part of uh, your june uh, current affairs preliminary based questions for the week of 10 to 16 and i shall see you for in the next post and i hope this was really helpful to you all and i shall see you in my next post uh, for the preliminary questions of june 16 for the next week of uh, the following week of june uh, and if you did please do like share and subscribe and please do not forget to comment and i shall see you in my next post and until then it's very happy learning